Okay, so then I think I will start. So thank you very much for having the possibility of this presentation today. Uh, I'd like to show you the results of the paper called Just Look, Knowing Peers with Image Representation that I co-authored with Kuntara Pumfaton from University of Missouri. And as the title of this presentation says, just look, I'd like to first of all invite you just to look for that what we're doing in this study because it is uh, related uh, to the image. So we uh, identify similarities between companies with the object representation uh, and then we formulate uh, industries uh, out of these similarities. So what we can you can see here at the left side of this screen, these are photos demonstrating uh, drilling platforms. So we have, for example, here companies that are oriented to drill oil, but also those that uh, produce machinery related with, uh, with drilling oil. At the middle, we can see, for example, some kind of engines, machinery on the right, trucks, everything related with the transport. And next slide, uh, what we can see, these are specialist vehicles on the left, like tractors, etc. Uh, smaller mechanical equipment at the middle and small electronic devices on the right. And the last side with presentation of uh, images. So here we have agriculture, natural resources on the left, consumer staples in the middle, and renewable energy on the right. So this is just like a brief introduction of what we're doing here. Mm. And now the agenda of the presentation. So I will start with the motivation, then data and the methodology, and I will go to results, starting with the economic homogeneity of industries that we create, applications, and I will explain the underlying mechanism that supports our finding, and finally, obviously, the conclusions. So starting with motivation. Certainly, industry classifications uh, are very important. So from the economic perspective, they can be used to restrict the scope of analysis, to identify control firms, to create performance benchmarks, also some descriptive statistics on sample firms. And from the practitioner's perspective, they can be used to diversify portfolios, create investment strategies, or to prepare multiple valuations. And although they are so important, in fact, it is not easy to say which industry classification is the best because we have uh, quite a few to choose from. And uh, the problem is that identification of similar companies is a demanding task. Similarity is not the universal concept and depends on the context. And according to the Tversky feature theory of similarity, the relative weightening of a feature varies with the stimulus, context, and the task. Mm, so there is no unique answer to the question on how similar is one object to another. And when we bring this problem to finance, uh, we can see that we have different approaches to create uh, industry classifications, and then they all rely on different measures of similarity. So with SIG or NIX, the similar is the production process. Mm, with the global industry classification standards, uh, the similarity is based on the principal business activity. So the key factor is in fact the revenue source. And we have also some alternatives like Kaustia and Rantala. Uh, I'm sorry, so just to be sure if you can hear me well again, because I have some emails and I'm not sure if you can understand clearly what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Perfect, just to be sure that everybody can hear it. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, so coming to alternatives, as I mentioned, like Kausia and Atala, and uh, common analysis of one company is uh, the similarity measure when we identify industries and Hoberg and Philips that looks for the 10K uh, reports descriptions and the products that are described over there. And this is uh, the starting point of creating the industry classification. And also what is important, already Boira et al. in 2003 demonstrated that uh, this, this is not only like different classifications, but also completely different results. Depending on the classification, the homogeneity within industries uh, measure with financial ratio is uh, really different. So our goal of the study is to show that identification of peers with an image is superior to other similarity measures. We want also to propose a new firm similarity measure, which reflects the typical method of determining peers by the human brain. And we want to construct image industry classification that provides high economic homogeneity and application benefits. So these are our goals. And when we first compare our approach to standard industry classifications like SIG, NIGS, or global industry classification standards, then we can say that existing classifications characterize firms only to one industry when many firms are hybrid. And with our approach, we can identify objects uh, from their characteristic from one company and then links this company with different industries. So from this perspective, it can be both like a non-unique and unique approach to formulate the industry classification. And also existing classifications are not well adjusted to firms innovation uh, and they are not that dynamic. And in contrast, uh, our approach is dynamic and we can find changes in business structure of, of a company really fast. Then when we compare our approach to Hoberg and Philips, that is a text-based classification and also typically concentrate on products because what we typically capture on these photos, these are products, but not only, but typically these are products. Then Hoberg and Philips, when look for the business descriptions and the 10K reports, they also typically capture products and their definitions. But when words may have multiple meanings, interpretation of a photo is straightforward. And also the amount of information that we process when looking for photos is incomparably higher because uh, when we look for the business descriptions and in Tenkai reports, then in fact, we have like 100 informative words per one report. And in our case, we take around 100 photos to classify a company to an industry. And each of these photos have a lot of information because this, this is a dimension of two to four, two to four, three. Uh, so a lot of different combination of the object is available uh, from the informational perspective. And when we look for our contribution, Certainly, we contribute to industry classifications because we identify a new similarity measure between companies. We contribute to investments as image industry classification provides superior diversification and momentum benefits, what I will show you in a moment. To neuroeconomics, because we show that human brains cluster images better than text. To behavioral economics, because by using Two million of photos from Google. We demonstrate how common photo representation impacts investor beliefs. And to the machine learning, finally, because we propose a unique machine learning methodology to cluster photos that is oriented to maximize economic homogeneity between teams. Okay, so now let me move to data and the methodology. Mm. We start with the typical data uh, stock universe. So Nisa, Amex and ASDAQ firms with codes 10 and 11. We exclude finance and service firms. Mm. We need to do it because the photos do not represent products offered to customers. 
So most of photos related to service companies demonstrate people who perform certain activities by providing services. And unfortunately, it is extremely difficult to identify these activities by an algorithm. So the machine concentrate on identification of people, not on the taxes. So this is the reason why we need to exclude these firms. Um, and we collect all photos from Google. We use the Python API query where we start with the company name, then products, and the period when we download photos from. So when we have this period, we can be sure that all photos then we download were uploaded to internet in this period. We can do that for years 2009 to 19. We do not need uh, photos from year 2020, 21, because we create classification with year 2018 to 19, and then we test results based on, based on it on these two remaining years. We use photos from years 2009 to 13 to formulate industries, and then we have three update periods, 14 to 15, 16 to 17, and 18 to 19. We also use in our um, research two set of financial ratios. The first one is coming from Walton Research Data Services. These are 70 ratios per company. And the second to test the results, which are 19 company level financial ratios that were used previously by Kalsen, Ratala and Hoberg and Philips in, this, in the research. So finally the sample covers of around 2,250 stocks per year. And now, the important question, so why we use Google? First of all, because it aggregates photos from many sources. So when we have photos in Google, it is like aggregation from everywhere, from newspapers, from company web pages, from Wikipedia. So that's why it's like a common um, set of photos that can demonstrate uh, what the company is doing. Also, it is the most common tool for finding information. So typically when we want to find some photos, we just go to Google and check what is the representation for, for each uh, product or each company that we are interested in. And uh, when we look also for other sources of information that we see that there are some drawbacks. So uh, they do not allow the collection of sufficient number of photos, which is the case, for example, with 10K reports when we have like on the several photos per report and sometimes even there's no photo in the report. Uh, photos tend to be subjectively selected by companies, especially when we look for the company websites. And so alternative, they, or they also can depict emotions, which is typical for social media. So a lot of emotions and in fact, not direct the informations. And so finally, uh, it is also important that photos come from reliable sources. Uh, so for example, images displayed first by Google are assets to or originate from the most credible sources. Given that Google indexes thousands of images for each listed company, the first 100 photos each year come only from highly evaluated sources and the majority originate from newspapers, company websites or Wikipedia as the aggregation of these most important sources. When we download 2 million of photos, obviously, majority of, the, of them is not thematically related with our research. So we perform a deep photo cleaning. And we start with the mechanical cleaning where the biggest task is to eliminate uh, <clears throat> people's faces. We don't want to process uh, people's faces. Uh, also logotypes, which is important and all uh, text that is uh, put into the photos. So all photos with text are eliminated. Then we also perform like contextual cleaning when we create a base of photos that represent any product. And then we uh, eliminate from our whole database those that are not related to photos. And uh, when we 
perform all the stars out of 2 million photos, we stay with uh, a little bit more than 400,000. So we eliminate of around 80% of photos. The methodology that we use in the study is quite complex. Uh, because we can't use typical clustering for our task, we search for objects that are characteristic of the firm's business activity. Meantime, uh, each firm can be represented with many objects that are not related to their business. So example here would be the iPhone. Uh, there can be a lot of companies that uh, show iPhones at the photos because it is so popular device and also the marketing device for companies. And we would, when we would create just the cluster uh, without any business orientation, that certainly we would have a cluster of companies that have iPhones in it. And in fact, uh, the business uh, outcome of it would be almost none. So that's why we need to combine two tasks in one, find similar objects on photos, which is typical to clustering, and use only objects related to company business activity, which in fact is a customization of clustering to finance. When it goes about steps of our methodology, uh, first, it is the image industry definition, then time varying setup, uh, we create our industries with two approaches, non-unique and unique, and all of that is tested in the out-of-sample setting. So starting with the image, def image industry definition, we use here the coregular multi-view clustering, where we have two views of information. The first view is coming from photos, and the second view from financial ratios. So we take representation from each photo with the convolution, convolutional neural nets. Uh, these are convolutional neural nets that are pre-trained. So we'll use a transfer learning. Uh, those nets were trained with, uh, uh, with uh, several million photos on it to recognize 1,000 objects. And then uh, we take a vector, which is uh, 1496 length um, from each photo and aggregate it together uh, to create one vector representation from several photos. And then we put it together along with uh, financial ratios to create uh, clusters. We uh, take approach when we have two granularities. The first granularity is 25 uh, industries. The second is 50 industries. And with the first one, we can see that there's a quite good representation of photos per each cluster. With the second one, it's a little bit worse, but still it is good for the next step when we in fact use these clusters as classes and train the convolutional neural net based on it. But what we found out that the higher granularity when we work with photos is not good. And that's why uh, we believe that uh, going into grand varieties like 75, 100, 200, it is uh, much too high and just the information that is included in this kind of classification is not sufficient. So uh, I will demonstrate here the results for 25 classes, but in our paper, there's also alternative approach with 50 classes where in fact the results are pretty similar. The time varying setup is based on this, uh, first of all, definition of industries, but then also updates. So uh, we have three updates, years 14, 15, 16 to 17, and 18 to 19. Uh, so as we, first of all, use also financial ratios to define industries, then finally, when we create industries here, so when we update them, then we use only photos. So these pre-trained models based on photos that were available from this uh, definition period, then are used only to take photos and based on the number of photos classified to each cluster, we define where should be the company uh, classified to each, to each industry. As I mentioned, what we are doing, it is to take the full out of sample setting and how we do it. So 
we have three periods of updates and when we take photos from period 14 to 15 then we test results on period 16 to 17 and the same with all the three periods when we update our results now let me move to the results mm, so first of all what we have it is like classification of 1000 100 companies uh, and it covers around 43 percent of the total market capitalization and 63 percent of uh, our our uh, sample so these are the results that we have um, and what we find out with this uh, image industry classification with 25 classes is that the Correlation of returns in each class is quite different, and it can be even like 53% uh, in the top industry, but sometimes it can be like 15%. In fact, it is quite the same situation like to the alternative approaches, but what we can say is that sometimes this image can gather companies that are really closely related to each other. And when we compare our results with alternatives, then we use those that are that have similar granularity. So we have 25 uh, industries in this setting, as I mentioned, I will demonstrate here result for the image industry 25. So then we compare with two SIG based classification. The first is industry classification, but Moscovitz and Gibraltar with 20 classes, Fama and French 30 with 30 classes. Nice industries that have uh, 18 classes on average, because this is the average uh, for several year, years. Uh, four digit jigs classification with 22 classes and I code 25, which is a Hoberg and Phillips classification with 24 classes. What we believe is that the best to compare in fact for us this is these are global industry classifications because in earlier studies it was shown that this classification get the highest homogeneity across other classifications that are popular on the market and uh, with Koberg and Philips because uh, our approach uh, is quite similar in this extent that we also concentrate typically on the products that are that are demonstrated by by companies. So with the first verification of results, we concentrate on R squares. So we verify the economic homogeneity uh, by regressing firms' uh, financial ratio on the same ratio average of the firm's corresponding industry, and we use for that ten ratio using market information at month T and 16 ratio using accountancy information at quarter T. Then with the results. So starting with the market information, every time when I have here this uh, dark green, then it is the first place, the highest R square, the uh, light green is the second place and the beige is the third. And here what we can see that image industry classifications typically are situated very high so in five cases it is the best score and uh, also it uh, exceeds global industry classification standards and Hoberg and Philips in price to book and equals with it with beta and market capitalization so in fact it is worse only in case of monthly returns and if our two sales what we find interesting it is that it is really good in forecasts at monthly returns and it will we will use it uh, a little bit later when i will show you uh, how we we feel this um, image industry classification power works and what why the results are good if the accountancy information we can see that the dominance of uh, image industry classification is even higher. So it outperforms, uh, outperforms uh, all uh, other alternatives in six ratios. And for 14 is one of the three buffs. Um, it excels global industry classification standard in 40 ratios and Hoberg and Philips in 12 ratios. 
And when we see for something that is uh, really catching the attention, then image industry classification captures expectations and grow very well because the forecast that uh, monthly returns, EPS, uh, ESGNA grow, and also sales grow are pretty high. And also it captures very well unobservables related to human capital because R&D grow, R&D uh, per unit of sale as, and SGNA per employee are pretty high in, in all, these, all these settings. So now let me move to applications. Uh, and I will start with uh, portfolio diversification benefits, how we measure it. We create a portfolio by randomly selecting one stock from each industry in each month and measuring its performance. And we perform 500 trials per each industry classification. Then we use four different wafering techniques, starting with equal weights and value weights and also optimize portfolios to maximize sub ratio and to minimize the conditional value at risk. And we do all those tests in the out of sample, out of sample testing uh, setting in, in six years. Uh, so what we can see here with the results, then performance measure represented here with sharp ratio and karma ratio are typically really high for image industry classification. We compare here, obviously, only uh, these companies that were uh, that were classified with image industry classification. So only those that are under the coverage of image industry classification, it is the same for each, uh, each industry classification scheme here. Um, and the second best uh, scores are represented with global industry classification standard. The third, in fact, is Nikes, but what we see here is that uh, Hoberg and Fili classification that uh, works with text has much worse results than the image industry classification. Now going to the second application, we also created a strategy based on the industry momentum. So we built this strategy in the same way as Moskowitz and Gibrat by investing long or short for six, nine, or 12 months in three industries with the highest or the lowest six months momentum. To show also robustness, we create the short-term reversal strategy by investing long in three industries for six, nine, or 12 months with the lowest one month returns. And we estimate industry returns with value and equal weights. We also have some like additional checks when we uh, also adjust Mm, the volatility uh, using the correction of Barroso and Santa Clara. And this table demonstrates just sharp ratios. So different settings of, the, of the strategies, uh, two different wafering techniques. And what we can see, it is that image industry classification typically outperform, outperforms others, especially with the equally weighted uh, returns. With the value weighted returns, in fact, global industry classification is better. But what we find interesting is that doesn't matter what kind of specification we take, image generates really uh, robust results. And uh, in, term, in terms of the global industry classification, the results are really good for the uh, market weighted uh, uh, market weights. But in fact, when we take the equally weighted um, portfolios, then the results are much worse. Okay, and let me now move to the um, mechanism, underlying mechanism that support these findings. So uh, depending on how market players identify their peers, the industry's categorization considerably impacts the trading of stocks. So having this really uh, short example, when we have two investors, investor A and investor B, and they have a different perception on stock similarity. So investor A see that stock one and two and three are similar and uh, investor B that stock one, two, and four is similar. When Then when there is an information that impacts stock one and can uh, impact also uh, other stocks that are in the same industry, 
then in fact stock two will have a really strong reaction for this information because the demand or supply will be related uh, by those reactions of two investors together but stock three will be uh, only reacted with investor a and stock four only by investor b so from this perspective we can say that um, the higher this biggest this common portion of investor beliefs the stronger the industry classification and that what we see is that image industry classification has a high degree of agreement or disagreement when regarding stocks categorized in the same or different uh, industries so the more the agreement within an industry the greater the impact of aggregated demand supply of investors on stock prices and we also measure additional this agreement uh, by first of all, as I mentioned, looking for the forecasted monthly returns. And what we found out is that uh, uh, investors are really, uh, really agree about the expectations towards uh, uh, forecasted monthly returns in terms of the image industry classification because, because the R score was the highest from this approach. And we also constructed like additional um, uh, evaluation coming from volume shocks in each industry where where the volume shock is an absolute volume change from the previous month divided by average absolute volume change from the past six months and this standard deviation demonstrate as the level of agreement uh, what we can see here is that the lowest standard deviation from the shocks is uh, coming from the global industry classification standards. So again, we see that this is a strong classification that was uh, also supported with these results in the applications. But image industry classification is like the second lowest. So we have like, additional proof that uh, this agreement of investors is pretty high. So coming to conclusions, uh, what we do here, we apply machine learning approaches to classify sectors by associating business with the picture representation. And we present an industry categorization that is closely related to human reactions. So how human perceive the similarities, in fact, we also capture with looking directly for photos representation and our uh, approach uh, has really nice economic homogeneity and also it demonstrates high benefits for the portfolio diversification and industry momentum. The drawback is that uh, it does not adequately categorize items that are difficult to communicate visually, such as services, high tech, finance, and multi product conglomerates. So we believe that in the future studies, uh, one should concentrate. Uh, to uh, on on the ways how can be the especially the services captures with the photo representation. Thank you very much. That is all from my side, and uh, it will be a pleasure to answer any questions and also listen, of course, the discussion. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, our discussion with Thomas' paper uh, is Professor Jin Ye Li. Professor Jin Ye Li is the lead assistant chair, professor of finance uh, from the Department of uh, Management and Science, and then from uh, Budan University, Professor of
Hi Thomas. Can you hear us? Hello. 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 Thank <laughs> Hello. 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 Wait, wait. Hello. 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 Could you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Hey, Thomas, can you hear us? Yeah, 
，他们有人偷懒，偷懒啊，有人把偷懒加进去，啊，赚的没几个钱，啊啊。就把它解除就行吗？加点主持，是他联系主持。OK。OK。然后你你问他。Hey Thomas, can you hear us? OK, good. So finally, it works. So OK, uh, I'm going to discuss um because I cannot leave the leave the. This uh, computer, I just stand here. Okay, so I'm going to discuss this paper. Okay, so this is actually, oh, uh, we'll see. Okay, so, so this is the paper, try to use uh, photos or images to implement industry classification guided by by financial characteristics uh, uh, of uh, firms, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I just make a very quick uh, summary of the paper. So in order to achieve this, uh, this cl classification, right, the paper follows um, those three steps, right? The first step is just assume that each firm, right, each firm, as a set of photos that correctly identifies uh, the main product of this firm. Right? So that means the paper try to classify the industry based on main products offered to the market. Right? So uh, then, right? so each industry include those firms which offer similar products. So this is the second state. If you take a look at this here, right? B is the B is the industry, right? Finally, right, the third state. So the paper tried to form K clusters, each of which represent an industry, right? So so here in total, right? In total K, right? Here K is a pre predetermined, for example, in the paper. I, it tries like 25 industries and 50 industries. In this case, is not automatically select, uh, selected. I, and uh, if you take a look at uh, the paper, I, so basically in, in, in some poll, I, whenever they select those K industries, all those industries keep constant in the out sample uh, period. I. So, I mean, so this is the basic three state, right? And the the technical part, the paper uses um, very complicated uh, machine learning approaches to 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 achieve those goals, right? So firstly, basically, right, they rely on two two machine learning approach. Right, first one, it's a it's unsupervised multi view clustering, right? This approach combines combines information extracted from uh, photos and from uh, characteristics. Right? So this is important, right? I mean, if uh, you just use photos, then in the end, you get some like statistical classification without any economic meaning. So, and then move on to the second stage, right? So, so this is guided clustering. That means classification is guided by using those uh, those uh, those uh, uh, those financial characteristics, right? Specifically, right, the paper uses this kind of regression, uh, and also the the so-called uh, industries in uh, clusters in the industry correlation, right? Here, this y is uh, each firm's characteristic, and this y i n d is the average. Uh, industry characteristic excluding firm I, right? And also the paper taking into account the dynamic uh, uh, dynamic setting up, right? Try to capture because each firm, right? At a different period, they may offer different types of a product, right? So, so the paper also 
using this uh, very advanced, uh, recently developed efficient nade to, to trick these uh, dynamic uh, changes over time, right? So this is the, the very, this is uh, the very basic summarize of the approach laying for its uh, application, right? As paper mentioned, it uses uh, photos download, downloaded from Google, right? And uh, basically, I uh, photos from 2009 up to 2019. I uh, so then I use uh, in sample from 2009 to 2013, and then I out the sample afterwards, right? And uh, specifically, uh, so the paper split the out sample period into three two period, uh, uh, two year periods, right? And whenever they have the uh, model trained, they use the first two year period and the trained model to predict the so called image industry classification and then paste on the financial data in the subsequent two year period. Right? So this is their special setup of out of, out of sample setup. Right? And as I mentioned, the paper considers two industry classifications, one is 25 industries, the other one is uh, is uh, 50 industries. I, in the end, the paper uh, uh, present the two uh, asset pricing applications. One is portfolio diversification, the other one is uh, industry momentum. Actually, my comments are mainly based on these two applications because technical side, yeah, I mean, let's uh, it's really <laughs> highly technical and I mean, implementation, I think there's no problem, right? So, okay, so, okay, my first comment is how to integrate those clusters, right? I mean, these are really industries, each cluster represents an industry, because if we take a look at, uh, okay, so, so, Lin, so, Lin, okay, you see, okay, what's the definition of the industry, right? So, I searched a little bit on Google, right? The given that the people also use Google, right? So, Lin, Lin, I searched uh, on Google, then find this definition from an uh, investor payer, right? This should be very close to asset from finance, right? It says, right, that the primary business activities, right? So if this is a really, I mean, if the paper says their clusters really represent industries, then that means, as I said, right, the, the paper assume that those products offered by the firm should represent the business activities. I mean, is this true or not? We don't know, right? So, and then whenever I'm, I was uh, preparing uh, this slide, this movie of Transformer, right? Suddenly pumped up in my mind, right? So because, okay, see, this is a bubble B and this is Optimus uh, Prime, right? So, I mean, if we take a look at those two, those two, uh, Lisa and Lisa, they, they look very different, right? According to the paper's argument, they should be they should belong to different clusters, but uh, are they really, do they really belong to different clusters? I mean, at least the movie says they should be in the same group, right? So, so, so I mean, let's, I mean, of course, right? As I said, there exist many different uh, ways to classify industries and basically, I mean, how to measure better, right? The paper says, okay, our image industry classification is better than the others. So how to measure, right? How to measure, this is really, I mean, difficult to do. And actually right, it depends on your purpose, what you want to do, right? And um, so from my point of view, right? Those clusters are not exact industries. They should have some kind of uh, portfolios based on information of uh, photos and financial characteristics, right? I mean, this may be easier to understand their 
classification. Uh, so this is my first main comment on how to interpret the clusters. Okay. Second is on their first uh, application. So portfolio diversification. So because uh, this uh, this table, right, many show sure that uh, their uh, the portfolio constructed by selecting one stock from each of their cluster achieves better diversification effects. But if you take a look at their constructions, right? So their constructions actually put mostly correlated stocks in the same cluster, right? And then whenever you select one stock from each cluster, definitely, right? So the portfolio constructed in this way should be should have a better diversification effect, right? This is my understanding. Then I think, okay, why you make so much trouble try to use a so complicated algorithm to construct such a portfolio, right? So if you simply use a very simple statistical method to do portfolio construction, for example, you simply, each time you simply choose 25, Stock uh, stocks with the lowest correlations, and see how how uh, how this this type of uh, portfolio performs, right? And also, for example, you simply use a standard uh, classification approach to to form different types of clusters based on simply based on financial characteristics. Then choose one stock from each clusters, construct your portfolio, and then take a look at its performance, right? So then my point here is that, okay, to compare okay, their portfolios with uh, other portfolios constructed from other definition of industry, it seems for me is not fair enough. I, I think if you really want to compare Diversification effect. You should, I mean, using a uh, different classification method, a different uh, or, or simple, simple, simple portfolio construction method. Uh, at least you, you should do those kind of exercise. Uh, so this is the 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 the, the, the comment on portfolio diversification. Okay, then industry momentum. Right. So industry momentum, we know from literature, right? So basically the literature says industry momentum is a short-term effect, right? So a recent paper by those three guys, just uh, first coming at uh, IFS, right? They just replicate the industry momentum originally proposed by these two guys, right? So you can see here it's a formation period here is a holding period, right? So you take a look at the, 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 the average returns and the IFRs, right? So, so, so you can see whenever you, you use the of range five factors plus momentum factors, you can see only this guy, the first guy has a significant IF, right? All the others, their IFRs are not statistically significant. That's why it says, industry momentum is a short-term effect. But if you take a look at their results, right? So this is their momentum here. Momentum formation period is uh, six months. Okay, so reversal formation period is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, one month. And the holding period, they didn't take a look at one period, uh, one month holding period, right? So if you take a look at here, right? This result. The strongest, strongest industry momentum actually for holding period is one month, right? And uh, I don't know why they didn't consider one month holding period. And uh, anyway, right? If we take a look at the six months holding period, nine months holding period, the 12, 12 months, right? So you compare those things, right? So the, the paper stop here. I mean, why you stop here, right? You should. Uh, you should investigate whether right, those mo industry momentum constructed from uh, your, your image industries can be explained by those factors or not. Right? 
And here you can see, right? Here you can see Palmer French plus momentum cannot explain the one month formation period, the one month holding period, right? And actually, look, three guys, they for the show, right? If you construct packed momentum, right? And the fact the momentum can fully explain industry momentum, right? So you can even hear, right? This is a fact momentum. This is the industry neutral fact momentum. And if you take a look at the alpha now, so, so originally, right? You can see alpha is highly significant. Whenever you take into account fact the momentum or industry neutral fact momentum, alpha has a gone, right? So again, so 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 here the paper, I, I think should do more, more on this exercise, right? To further investigate whether okay, those factors can explain their industry, uh, industry momentum or not. If those factors can explain those industry momentum, right? Again, why we make trouble, right? To use so complicated time consuming algorithm to construct uh, industry momentum, right? You just hold this uh, fact momentum, it's quite easy, right? One second, you can do everything, but for the image industry classification, I think it takes quite a long time, right? Quite a long time. And actually, I mean, for me, before, before take a look at this uh, portfolio diversification or industry momentum, I mean, actually, I'm more interested to see that uh, the, 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 the image right, contains useful information on expected returns and the covariance, right? If so, then we move one step further to take a look at the portfolio, to take a look at the different uh, strategies, right? So then, I mean, my here my, my, my content is very straightforward uh, uh, comment, right? Just to see, right, if you combine financial characteristics and uh, information from the Amy, so they can better span expect uh, returns and the coherence or not. If so, right, you move on to more asset uh, pricing applications. And this is a kind of a right, straightforward way to do. Right, I mean, let's see. So the, I mean, basically, uh, this is really a interesting paper. I mean, they, it uses uh, the state of the art, interesting. A machine learning method, right? I mean, really highly uh, technical, and it contributes to the asset processing literature using alternative data. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing more relevant uh, asset pricing applications in this paper. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Thomas, do you want to um, respond? Mm -hmm. Hi, Thomas, do you want to respond? Uh, you're muted. Yeah, well, I know I can, I, I can. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for this great discussion. It was a lot of interesting suggestions. So we will certainly look for it closely. Um, maybe one thing that I can add, it is related with this uh, construction. So as you mentioned, when talking about our methodology, these uh, industries are formulated with financial ratios and image. But finally, uh, our industries are based only on image. So when we compare this, uh, mm, uh, this uh, industry momentum strategy uh, or, or also the portfolio diversification benefits, then in fact, what we see it is that it is not based on the financial ratios and the information from the market, but it is based on strictly the product offering or similarities based on Photos. So from this aspect, we believe that this is like a different approach that demonstrate that uh, even when you're not looking for the um, information that is directly available on the market, that you can still achieve uh, a really good uh, uh, 
correlations within industries that can give us this kind of uh, results. So maybe that's my feeling of why we are different than just from the statistical approach when we would take uh, information directly coming from the market and put industries from it and measure what's the portfolio diversification benefit. So still in fact, there is a discussion because these kind of measures can be sometimes statistic and just not based on the uh, real financial information from the companies because all in all, uh, sometimes the correlations can be really like something uh, not related with uh, the same companies, but just with some kind of uh, just specific situation on the market uh, and not the true uh, underlines of the business. And uh, when we look for correlations in one year, then can be completely different in another way. So this, what we believe is like a, a, a little bit more important from the aspect when we take a portfolio diversification, not based on the information from the market, but from the true industries, uh, whatever these are six global industry classification of our approach, but still the informational input is like a little bit different. So this is like the only comment that I have, but really we regret of, of uh, your comments and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Our next speaker is.